here. Holy God, this is the day you have made right in your light and your love. Guide us in the new ways of your Son, so all people may praise you and enrich your church for their own gifts. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, thank you. All right, kids, come on up. Okay, get along. We're gonna say get along with siblings. That would make it shorter. Get along. Get along with siblings. Siblings is a fancy word for brothers and sisters. I love how you make your bees. That is pretty cool. I've never seen someone make their bees that way. All right, what do you think? Someone your age. What could, what could be a promise that you do? Oh, don't wake other people up. Let's write it over here. Don't wake other people up. We like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't wake other people up. We're testing your spelling, too. You're doing a good job. Okay. All right. Ella, can you think of a resolution, a promise that we do to our, that we give to ourselves in the new year to either make us be better or to get rid of something that we don't want to do? Get better grades. I think you can fit that, right? Here. Get better grades. Okay. 
butter grades instead of better grades? Yeah. <laughs> and then I did something secondary. Uh, your teacher must love you. Yes. Butter. Butter better. Bitter butter. There's a bitter better Betty butter something. Okay. <laughs> All right. There's a limb raker, not a limb raker, but a tongue twister. Okay. You did a nice job. Give him a hand because he had this spell. It's hard to write. Anyway. Okay. So we're making promises to ourselves to do better, right? <laughs> How long do you think these resolutions last for most adults? Forever. Hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, maybe. But by February, most resolutions are gone. Maybe 6 or 7% of the people are still holding on to their, to their resolutions. So, it's not good. Uh, so, but most people think, well, you know what? It was a promise to myself, so what's the big deal? I'm not hurting anybody, the promise is for myself. Well, do you know who keeps all his promises? Who? God. God keeps all his promises. Today, the big people are gonna learn about a promise that God made, and two people got to witness this promise, because this promise was hundreds and hundreds of years in the making. So, when Jesus was born, when he was eight days old, he had to go to the temple, and he had to be, he had to be, um, well, they have a circumcised and a whole other thing. Anyways, he, there was a gentleman, a very old man named Simeon, and he had waited his whole life to see God's promise about a Messiah coming to this earth. And God had promised, I'm going to send you a Messiah, and no one had seen it yet. And so Simeon knew that he would not die until he saw this Messiah. And so when Mary and Joseph brought jo uh, Jesus to the temple and dedicated him, Simeon was in the temple as usual. He was at, working there. And as soon as Simeon saw baby Jesus, he knew that God had kept his promise. And so Simeon took Jesus in his arms and he praised God saying, Lord, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I've seen your salvation which you have prepared for all people. So God always keeps his promises. And when we say, I promise, we need to, we need to make sure we honor that, right? Have you ever said it to a friend? I promise I won't tell your secret. And then you go and tell somebody. Yeah. Or I promise, I, good, I promise I will come to your house and help you. I will promise I'm going to come to the church and bring snacks or whatever. I promise, I promise. Your promises need you to, to you have to keep your promises, right? And then there was another person in the temple. Her name was Anna. And she was at the temple worshiping also. And when she heard what Simeon was saying, she praised God and told everyone that Jesus was the Savior that God had promised. So we too... Now that Christmas is over and Jesus is born, we need to go out and tell people about Jesus. We promised God that we would do that. And we can do that by reading our Bible, praying more, going, coming to church, coming to Sunday school, and just being to tell our friends about that. Do we have Sunday school today? Uh, do we have Sunday school today? No. Your dad says no. All right. So, oh, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that in the Bible, all the promises that you made came came through and so we thank you for that that you will be that you promise that you will be with us in all times so father be with these kids as they go about their business keep them healthy keep them safe give them wisdom as they go to school to study really hard to be that to be a good kid and to learn their abcs and all that stuff and thank you for their parents who faithfully bring them here to church in jesus name we pray amen i wasn't going to bring you anything i was going to be the bad aunt julie Whatever. Holly's like the nice aunt, and I'm the mean aunt. So I like, I don't know, I just grabbed stuff from my house. <laughs> you gotta quick grab, grab one. I got bugles. The high schoolers get these at my house if they come to my house. <clears throat> there you go. Grab one, got one? Oh, here. Please. Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. 
As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of dove or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had been, had, before he had been seen in the Lord Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arm and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelations to the Gentiles and the Lord of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what he said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be signed and will be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at every morning, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child, to all, who, to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jew Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of God for the people of the God. stopping to think our music our songs, our hymns it's all so much part of our service, part of our life how about we take a moment just give a round of applause to our praise band and Julie mm -hmm. yes we have to say thank you the music has been something so the new year is upon us Shall we start with thanks to God for all that is past and all that is to come? The time of joy, having just celebrated the birth of our Savior, the King of all kings, Emmanuel, God with us. But here's a quote that gives us something to think about, something to give us joy and a hope for days ahead. We go from Malachi to Matthew in one page of our scriptures but that one piece of paper separates the Old Testament from the New so the New Testament which represents 400 years of history 400 years where God's voice wasn't heard and that silence was broken with the cry of a baby Christmas night from Louis Giggle. In that time frame, and as they mentioned the time again here this morning, in the time of the new year, the time is to our calendar and to our perspective. But Simeon, he learned his time. It is to God's time. To his will and to his way, to not our time, not our calendar. So with joy, hope, and love, look about to see the true meaning of Christmas, our Savior, Christ the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit is here with us this morning, so my prayer, as you look about and think of this, my prayer is that you keep this feeling that you have now with you, all year long. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? So did you sing that this Christmas season? He 
you should have. You still have time. And here upon the new year, it might be the best time to be a listener. To tune into the music that is playing around us all the time. The music of the spheres, the music of heaven, or creation itself. Do you hear it? I was given many gifts. One is the gift of appreciation of musical ability. Yeah, that means I can't play any instrument. Probably can't even carry a tune in a bucket. But I can listen. And I can appreciate those that can. One I used to, and occasionally still do go back to listen to, is my cousin. And the songs that she has put out through the years. My cousin, Linda Ronstadt, she could sing. She could sing like I was a part of her. It's a true gift to rise to the level of professionals. I know since she had retired from performing and medical issues has silenced the song for now. But it takes practice to be good. Now Julie could attest to that weekly up here practicing. Yet her gift made it seem I mean, it seemed like I was never heard. She just sang. She just sang naturally. And I listened. Listening doesn't get you many admirers. Not like singing does. Yet it is essential for the life or for the spirit. This Sunday, we get to hear the story of a professional listener. A man had dedicated his life to listening. And then when the time came, he played. He sang the song he'd been listening for. He sat down to play the tune he learned by ear. Long story, indeed, as we've seen this morning. But read it all the way through. And that you did. Don't skip on Simeon's story. And don't leave out Anna. We need them. We needed to listen for a while. We need to catch the tune. To follow the rhythms. Simeon learned how to listen. And his name means heard, believe it or not. It was what he was born to do. So he did. He listened. Day and night, he listened. He was listening for the future. He was listening for hope, the consolation of Israel. And the consolation. Or Simeon was young enough at the time that when the Romans occupied Israel, they desecrated the Holy of Holies, and he would have been young enough to see that. And to see and look for consolation would be what he saw. So Luke tells us he was listening for that which would bring peace, that which would bring light. He listened day after day. He went to the temple to listen. He heard the cries of the people. He heard the songs of the loud, happy, celebratory prayers that seemed so brash. A good hearted anyway. He heard the ritual prayers spoken, sometimes as though they had lost their meaning. And sometimes as though the meaning was so deep, it resonated through the soul of those who prayed. He heard the wordless prayers that were wept from swollen and reddened eyes. 
wrung out a twisted scraps of cloth between hands gnarled with pain and fear. He heard the proud and grateful prayers of the people who knew how blessed they were. He heard them and wept and laughed with them. He heard them all. He heard more because he listened deeper. He heard the responses. He heard the sighs of the spirit as it flowed like the wisp of comfort into the hearts of the hopeless and broken. He heard the soothing song of blessing as it played on hearts in less tune than his, but aware nonetheless, somehow. He heard the invitation of the God he loved to follow, to obey, to keep close, and stay awake to watch and listen. He heard, somehow, he heard. Then that day, he heard the music shift into a higher key. A note of anticipation filled the air. <clears throat> a baton pointed, a new singer taking the stage. And he followed the director's gaze and welcomed the one who comes. Then Simeon, who lived a life of listening, <coughs> became a teacher of the song he knew. He sang into the hearts of those who came caring more than they knew. His song was a gift to the church called the Nunes Dimits which is Latin from the first song, from the first words of the song in Latin, which is now let. These fancy words could simply be said as the canticle of Simeon, which you could find and look up at 225 or 226 in your hymnal. There's more on that later, but you're certain with now let in total would be now let your de servant depart in peace. We always saw that he was saying it's time to die. Because Luke told us that Simeon was promised that he wouldn't die until he heard what he was listening for. But maybe just maybe he is simply saying, I'm done listening. I've heard all that I need to hear. I've heard the voice of the one who sings the song of salvation, who chants the chorus of redemption. My ears are full. He may be done listening, but he isn't done singing. He has to teach the song to those who will sing it. And his colleague Anna teaches it to all who are around them, running from one another to make sure they sing. You can't stand silent in this service. Not in this worship service. You can't have closed lips for this rhythm. Doesn't matter whether you think you can sing or not. We do turn the tune. The falling and the rising. The major and the minor key. That which makes us smile. And that which evokes a tear. We need to sing. Might as well. Our inner thoughts are revealed anyway. Simeon says so. And he ought to know. He's been listening to these inner thoughts 
his whole life. And now, he sings the song he has learned by ear. It takes time to learn to listen. But it is worth the effort. The Spirit rested on Simeon, Luke says. Rested. Not stirred up, not agitated or poked, nor crowded, <coughs> but rested. Maybe if we listen more to the Spirit, the voice of God, we might know rest like Jesus promised. But we can also learn to sing, to play by ear. Paul learned that song and he sang it every chance he got. He sang it in the fourth chapter of Galatians. He sang about God sending the Son, about redemption and adoption. He sang to us as children with the Spirit in our hearts, crying, Abba. And as we learn, Abba means Father. He sang to those set free as heirs to the promise. It was one of his favorites, a greatest hit he sang again and again. Isaiah, he sang the song too. His song is a fashion song. Garments of salvation, robes of righteousness. We look as if we're going to a wedding. We look like a garden in full bloom. We look like a chorus of praise singing in the heavenly choir. Serenading the whole world when Isaiah says, Sing, we can't keep quiet. No way to be silent. So sing. Sing until everyone notices. Sing until everyone hears. What they need to hear is not us, not our song, but the composer, the conductor, the source of our music. The beauty of the proclamation of our lives is a point to the ongoing presence of the God for whom we sing. Will we sing into a new year? Will we commit to being the sign of God's presence at work in our world? I'm no longer my own, but yours, we pray with Wesley's covenant prayer. We ask God to assign our parts, to rehearse us, to direct us, so that we can be the choir that is needed in these chaotic times. And maybe, just maybe, some of us will be assigned to be listeners, like Simeon. Our proclamation will be the tear of joy that rolls down the face when we hear the music of the one who comes. So please remember this lyrical message set to the composer Cadence to be like Simeon. You don't have many versions and many ways of coming up with your song to your own tune and to your own way of rhythm. So it is set to the composer's cadence. And we are to be like Simeon, to have faith and trust. Because this tempo is set. Shall we learn to sing along? So praise be to God, now and forever. Back to Linda Ronstadt being your cousin.
<laughs> we need to hear the story about Lily Ronstadt being your cousin. Can you tell us real quick? Oh. Is that a long story? She's like fourth cousin removed. No. Oh, okay, tell us. No. That is by, that would be Lily Ronstadt. She is my second cousin. She spent her summers in Hattie, Michigan as a child. Her mom grew up in Lapeer High. Oh, okay. So here in Michigan. So as I mean, there was more to that story than that, but when I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> we got to hear that story about Linda Ronstadt. It's so easy. I know that was the song that came from. I had a poster. Huh? I had a poster. Oh, you had a poster in the background? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Each said, we each have a song, we each have our own way, and now we know Rob's secret way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, that is so cool. Anyway, so God gave us two ears and one mouth, right? They say that, that we are to listen more than speak, and that's a good reminder of sometimes people come to us and they want they want us to listen to them, and we're quick to give our, you know, our thoughts and our opinions, and we need to just to let them, and then hopefully the Spirit of the Lord will give you the words to say. So, anyways, it's time for joys and concerns. We have someone writing them down. If you, for you online, you can add them to your post there online, and we will get those out on Monday. So, what, what do we have to lift up to the Lord today? Yeah, uh, my brother Le Rick, my brother Larry, and Glenn Martin. So, Rick, Larry, and Glenn Martin for help. And Glenn Martin for help. <coughs> yeah, joy. Right, joy is on a coming test Monday. For, for Joyce, for oncoming tests for tomorrow, Monday. Yeah, Donna. My nephew Gary has COVID. Oh, so for a nephew Gary with COVID? Yes, Darren. Uh, Grandma Sally for health. Grandma Sally for health. Anybody else? Yeah, Dan. Uh, Tommy, my nephew's friend down there in Grand Rapids, KET. Anyway, she's in a coma on the respirators. Don't look good. Okay, so for my cousin Tommy's friend, Kate, Kat, Kate, yeah, she's Asian, isn't she? So yeah. K-E-T, who's in a coma. Yes. Uh, Dan Walton. Dan Walton, for continuing healing for him. Yes, Carol. Uh, Sisters-in-law, uh, Diane and Carol Ann for cancer. Um, Hannah for health. Okay, so for Diana and Carolyn, Carol Ann, Carol Ann yeah. for cancer and for Hannah for health. Oh, Joy, sorry. Um, for Sharon Kaiser, she's having an MRI on Tuesday, I think. Okay. The 16th. Okay, the 16th. The 16th. So, so for Sharon Kaiser, MRI. Pat, did you have your hand up? Yeah, for all the um, nursing home staff and residents who are still dealing with COVID and are still losing residents. Yes, so for all the nursing homes, the residents, the caretakers there and everything. For our military, and for Shelly and Ramona, um, for cancer. What else do we have? Yeah, Connie. And for the birthday joys. For the birthday joys, yes. My uncle's is this week too. Is he awake, Uncle Rich? <laughs> Are you awake? Your birthday's this week too. No, my, or next week, or no, it is, yeah, it is this week. I know your birthday is. Just wake up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remind you, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Cousin Ashley for a healthy pregnancy. Cousin Ashley for a healthy pregnancy. Ellie. Unspoken. Unspoken. Anything else? All right, let's go. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this precious time in our service where we can come to you directly, Father. And we just first thank you for who you are and for the promises that you keep. And we just thank you for that. And so we just put all our love and heart and trust into you as you continue to guide us. Um, each day. And Father, you heard the prayers of your people. There are many people dealing with serious health issues. There's many people still fighting cancer. There's people still recovering from surgeries and people with tests coming up. And so we just pray for healing for all of them. And we just thank you for all of the new medical advances that make us um, get over these things and, um, and heal and live longer. And we do pray for the crowd that's going around, Father, and um, just pray that uh, it leaves people quickly. We uh, thank you for um, just being there for us and for people who are traveling, who are heading out south for the, for the winter. We thank you for this church 
It's a new year, Father, and so with our ministries, we just pray that you will bless them, that you will guide us, um, and just be there for us. And be, help us be the disciples that you need us to be. And thank you for your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So now it's offering time. God said, give me your best first. That's what they did back then. Thankfully, we don't have to go find the sheep and slaughter the sheep to, to give our sacrifices. So we'll give that. And then whoever's in the back, if you could bring it up. And we're going to stand and try to sing some more.
with real quick, and then you can end us out. How about that? Okay, so downstairs is the new year. We have new giving envelopes in case you didn't weren't here last week. They're down there. Put your name and what number you took so that Denise can keep track of that for tax purposes. Hey, there's lots of home events at the high school and middle school for the sports. A lot of empty slots, so if you're willing to do that. In the fall, we need over $800 for the ministries here in the church when you guys work at the gates at the games. So we appreciate that. And communion will be next week. And all meetings, except for SPRC, are open. So you see all these meetings where we have a guest speaker coming. All those meetings are open. If you're coming, you're interested in all of what's going on, you are welcome to those, except for the SPRC meetings. And I think I got it all. You think it? Woo-hoo! You're out of here. You, you, you get us out of here. Oh, boy. <laughs> now we're going to an ending here. This ending I discussed with Colleen. Yes. And in my message, I said it was from... 226 and you wondered about my note. Yeah. And I said, I'll get back to that. So as we begin to close that, I believe he has that on the screen. He's back there hiding. And there it is from 226. So I'm surprised. Let's see if we could try to at least get through these two lines. Oh, goodness. Here we go. All right. So I'm surprised everybody. <laughs> He's calling an audible. Yes, I did. <laughs> He's really tough. Well, I don't even know the song, so here we go. This will be I'll fun. just play it through once. Okay, play it through once. I don't know. I don't know. excitedly went about telling all after giving thanks to God. I pray we approach, approach each day with this excitement to tell all of our Savior. May our Savior be as excited to see us when you and I, when our song ends. We love God. And we now depart in peace knowing that you have encountered Christ, our Savior. Go now to watch, to wait, and to spread the light of Christ to the ends of the world.